What do you say we start talking about the letter S? I'm going to do something very different with this letter, and that is I'm going to show you how not to draw it. Do not draw it like this. That's not a bad S, but it's not a chancery cursive S. It's uh, Roman, maybe, and something else. So there are a number of things, modifications we need to make to that sort of traditional S to make it chancery cursive. And it's a little bit hard to describe exactly what those things are. Let's start with the middle curve, which I call an S curve when we're doing every other letter. Now it really is an S curve. The first thing I'm going to do that at is, is straighten it out quite a bit. Okay? That might be a good place to start. Then the next thing I'm going to do is straighten out this curve. Instead of making it big and bulbous, I'm going to flatten it out a little bit, make it point almost straight... Uh, Let's add straight down to the southeast corner of my page. And then the, the bottom curve, now here's where it gets a little bit tricky because so far so good, but one of the things we don't want to do, and ask me why, ask Mr. Arrighi, <laughs> the, the, Irish, the Irish monk who, who is the grandfather of transfer curse of 17th century something, ask him why. We can't, but he's gone. But... <laughs> We, we don't want the S to be symmetrical. We don't want the top of it to be the same as the bottom. So I don't want to do a curve just like this. So typically what I will do is just try to make sure that that bottom curve is just a little bit more bulbous, a little bit more pregnant, a little more curvy than the top, but only a little bit more. Okay? And that's not a bad chancery cursive S. So let me walk you through that again. Now, drawing it is easy. The challenge doing it this way is going, to be get, is going to be getting it to fit inside, making it the right height, the right size. But I think one, one approach to it is and virtually never can you do it all in one stroke with, with a calligraphy pen because it would be chattering uphill like crazy. You can do it with a pencil, but not with a pen. So I'm going to do it in, th I'm going to do it in three strokes. So I'm going to start with, again with the center curve by making a a more gentle S curve than this thing here. Then the top curve is the flattest of the three. And the good question is, how far down does it come? Uh, and it looks to me like I'm starting, I'm stopping at about, you know, one, about 130. If I, if I turn this into a clock face, do you follow me? So I stop about there. Or about at, if it, this is an X, I stop right there. The bottom the bottom curve, again, because I don't want it to be symmetrical, I'm going to go a little bit past that, that diagonal line, start up here, and make it just a little bit more curvy. Let me see how that looks. See, that one is not as good as that one. And that's exactly the kind of thing that you're going to be struggling with in getting your chance recursive. Is, okay, I'm going to do this curve. Then Dan Nelson says I'm going to flatten out this one and round out this one. And yeah, that's not bad. That's a pretty good, good one. The challenge, are you ready for the challenge? With the letter S, this, by the way, in my book may be the most difficult of all the letters. So it, it, don't be surprised if it takes us and you a while to get it nailed down. The problem with this very nice attractive S is that it's not at the right angle. My, my italics goes this way and this is either vertical or actually leans a little bit back. So like, oh man, now I have to take this whole thing. If it was in Photoshop, it'd be easy, right? I'd grab it and tilt it. Perfect. Now we're done. But we have to do that without the aid of Photoshop. So let me try again. So I'm going to make this first curve a little bit steeper, then bring this one down just a little bit further, and this up a little bit further, and then I'm going to try to accomplish the slant of an italicized S. And that one is pretty close. Okay? That's it. Now, you might talk about, does, does it, is there a little hook on the end of these lines? I would say yes on the bottom one. So I haven't drawn, I, I didn't do those here. Yes on the bottom one, no on the top one. And again, this is just based on my research, research looking at many, many, many samples of chancery cursive. That seems to me the, the general uh, tendency among professional calligraphers is there's no flag or hook or anything on the top. There is one here on the bottom. Again, partly because for some reason we don't want these two curves to be symmetrical. So if I make them different, that's one more difference. Now, let's talk about still in the double pencil. You got that going, right? 
Now let's talk about the lowercase s. Also, let me show you how not to do it. <laughs> There's the lowercase s. Fine if it were doing some other typeface, but not at all chancery. The lowercase s is easier, but it's still a little bit strange compared to most of the letters. And it's strange, number one, in this regard. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say my, my no, let's make it five. My lowercase letters with this size of a nib are five nibs high. The S is strange in that it goes above the top guideline, but it's not like it's not as high as like you know an as ascender line on a tall letter. It doesn't go that high; it just goes a little bit above. In fact, there are two letters that are going to do this in the alphabet that just go always traditionally, typically a little bit above this guideline, and they are two letters right next to each other in the alphabet: S and T. So keep your seatbelt on. We're going to do the same thing with letter T. So the, the lowercase s goes a little bit, just a little bit above that line, not much. And then the main part of the letter s, lowercase, is, again, quite a flattened out s curve. So it's not, it's not radical like this, not, not like a Le Mans race car track, you know, with screeching tires. No, it's just, just a little bit of a curve there. And the bottom of, of the s is pretty short, probably like that, and the top of the S is very short, almost non-existent. Now that's a beautiful S, unfortunately again, it's just leaning the wrong way. Got it? So we want to take that shape and make it look like it's following the curve of the italic. So I'm going to do my first curve a lot more vertical. This one is very short and just a little bit over this guideline, and then this one is fairly short. There we go. That's not a bad S. So as you can see, the, the chancery curse, if this is a traditional S, the chancery curse of S has been put in a, in, a, in a vice and it's been squeezed so it's a lot more vertical. It's a thinner, much thinner letter than in ordinary typeface. Got it? That's a little bit tall. Let me do it again. There we go. There we go. I started out making that one long. Are you with me? I've used up so much of this page. If you don't mind, I'm going to go to a new page to move to a couple of things. I'm going to move to, I'm going to, move to my um, felt tip pen, but I'm also going to talk about how you connect the letter S and how you uh, extend it if it's at the end of a line of type. Let's go back then to the capital letter S, beginning with the main curve, this curve fairly flat, and this curve with a little hook at the end of it, again, fairly flat, but go a little bit higher than the first one. That's not bad. Let me do another one. So the capital S is also flattened out a little bit. There, I think that's better. This, this curve was a little bit too long, so if I eliminate that, that makes it a better uh, chancery cursive S. Now, lowercase, again, very flattened out S curve, a rather short curve down here at the bottom, and a very short one at the top, just over, just above the guideline. Get it? Now, what happens if you want to connect this letter to, let me do that again, if you want to connect this letter to the next letter, most of the time, you don't. You could conceivably bring a line up like this to connect. I would think if, if you really need something like that, if you feel like you need it, do it, but most of the time you won't. On the other hand, if you want to do a final letter S in a line of type, yes, there is something that you can do. It may be slightly surprising. Well, there's actually two different options. You can do one of two things. You can take the very last curve there, and extend that like that. And of course, I'm doing, I, I, I hope I'm not misleading you, I'm doing many of these curves so dramatically, which would be a little bit unusual. Let me do one that's more moderate and typical. There. That would be a typical final S. You also have the option of doing from the top, something like that. Either one. The basic idea is, does it still look like 
the letter S, even though you add this flourish on the end. And my thinking is, yes, it does look very much like the letter S, so we haven't violated the basic shape. So we're in good shape. We're in good shape because it's a good shape. Uh, that was completely unintentional <laughs> and bad. <laughs> Let's go to a dip pen. And I'm pulling up a piece of paper to make sure my pen is behaving itself. Behave, pen, behave. There we go. Let's do a couple more, and I'm sure you're well on track with doing the capital S. A fairly flat S curve. This curve even more flat with no hook on the end. And then this one starts a little bit higher than this higher up than this comes down, if, if you know what I mean. This is a longer curve with a little hook on it and a little bit more of a curve. And if I do it right, it will still feel like it's lined up with lined up with the italics. And that one's pretty close. I think I'll let it go for now. It could be just a tiny bit more. Oh, by the way, did you see what happened right there? Don't talk and move your pen. Uh, but <laughs> if that does happen to you, first of all, know you're a calligrapher, and those kind of things happen. How, have you ever looked at the uh, 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 Declaration of Independence? Yes, yeah, got this kind of stuff all over it. All the old documents did. But the other thing is don't panic. Probably don't try to blot it up. Let it stay there. Let it dry, and you're going to try to fix it with an exacto knife. We may talk about that later. We may never again get to that level of, of finish. But don't panic. Don't put your hand in it. Okay, lowercase s, uh, quite a shallow s curve in the middle, very small curve at the top, and fairly conservative curve at the bottom. And again, if it happens to be the last letter, you could extend that line like that, and you've got a beautiful s finishing your line of type. Whew, you've done it. You got through probably the most difficult letter in the whole alphabet, and you're still breathing. Wait, and me too. <laughs> We're a great team. Let's keep going. <laughs>